Hey everyone, and welcome again to a short little video courtesy of investingsuccess.ca. Today is the 1st of August, 2023. Here's a picture, you know this guy, Albert Einstein, the father of the general theory of relativity. He did a lot of his really good work back in the 20s and 30s. He reminded us that as per his general theory of relativity, our cosmos really comprises time and space. And he regarded time and space as a fabric. And he said that time and space, like any fabric, can be bent, warped, distorted. Now, is there any connection, any implication for the financial markets in what Einstein's theory of relativity had to say? Well, let's take a look. Here's an image of uh, an array of lines. Um, I want you to imagine that that is a blanket. And I want you to imagine that you round up four people and you put a person at each corner of the blanket and you tell them to pull tight. So as each of the people on the corners pulls, that blanket is gonna get tight. Now, you've got a ball in your hand and the ball is, is a little bit heavy. And you're going to set very gently that heavy ball on that tight blanket. And even though they've got it pulled tight, the weight of that ball is going to cause a little bit of a distortion in that blanket. And that's exactly what Einstein was getting at when he referred to the warping or the bending of space-time fabric. Now, he said that as space-time is warped, bent, distorted, gravity will seem to be greater. And the key word is seem. Gravity will not be physically greater. Gravity is what gravity is. But if gravity seems to be greater, does that affect human emotion? That's the question I've got. And if gravity seems to be greater, does that affected human emotion translate, manifest into something on the financial markets? Hmm. Let's take a look. So the question of whether or not Einstein's work is connected to the financial markets was answered um, in very good fashion in 2012 by a European mathematician. His name was Fabio Areste, and he published a book called Quantum Trading. So he really boiled everything down to an equation. So he basically said that a, a point of distortion on the blanket on space-time fabric, an individual point of distortion can be figured out, calculated, using the formula n times 360. And then to that, you're going to add a factor called PSO. So first of all, what is n? Well, n is a harmonic level. And all of these uh, uh, quantum line data points are extensions or multiples of one another. And the harmonic levels are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Each of these numbers is evenly divisible into 360. Okay, so you're not going to get a seventh harmonic. Um, it's, everything is evenly divisible. Now, PSO, what is that? That is uh, determined by taking the heliocentric degree location of a planet and multiplying it by a conversion factor. Now, the conversion factor basically is what helps you bring that quantum line data point into the price level for whatever it is you're looking at. So let's take, uh, for example, the S&P 500. It's trading, um, you know, 4,000, either side of 4,000. So you have to then pick an appropriate harmonic level and an appropriate conversion factor to get your equation to give you data points that are in the realm of that 4,000-ish level. If you're trading something like, um, uh, you know, let's say corn that's uh, $6 and some odd per bushel uh, or 600 cents per bushel, you're going to use slightly different harmonic levels and different conversion factors. Now, once you figure out all of that, just remember that the planets are orbiting the sun. And so they are continually moving, continually distorting the fabric of space and time. So what Oresti is basically telling you is 
pick it, pick a time, like here and now, figure out the heliocentric degree location of a planet, figure out what harmonic level and conversion factor you need to give you the the uh, the data point that is of the proper magnitude for the chart that you're looking to apply it to. Go into the future, you know, three or four months. Where is that planet at that point? Calculate another data point. So now you'll have two data points spread over several months of time. What happens when you have two points? Join them with a line, just using a simple ruler or straight edge. Now you've got what Aresti calls a quantum line. And let me show you um, what happens when you start to lay these quantum lines on a price chart. Now, before I get there, you're probably wondering, where do I get heliocentric planetary data? Well, maybe you've got a heliocentric ephemeris on your desk. If you do, great, wonderful. All of the numbers are in there. If you don't, there are websites where that information is freely available. And the one that I recommend is a website called astroseek.com. And the actual URL address is here at the bottom of this slide. And it's, it's a bit of a long one. But uh, if you can get your way to astroseek.com, uh, you can get for every month of whatever year you're looking at, uh, you can get the heliocentric locations of the planets. And to uh, fit in with the examples that I'm going to show you, here are the heliocentric locations of Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. I have determined them for January of 2023, and then I've gone forward in time to July of 2023. And so, for example, Jupiter back in January was at 12 degrees. And I'm taking zero degrees to be zero degrees of Aries. So Jupiter was effectively 12 degrees of Aries in January. In July, it was 29 degrees of Aries. Saturn, for example, was 326 degrees. So that would be in the sign of Pisces. And then by July, it had moved a little bit, and it was 332 degrees. And so on for Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. So you can get, with a pencil and a paper and the ephemeris data, you can make yourself a little table, and you can lay out the numbers. Because then when you feed those into the equation uh, with the proper harmonic level and conversion factor, you're going to get your, your quantum points and you're going to plot them on a price chart. So um, here's a uh, price chart of the E-mini S&P 500. And this, um, now I'm using Optima. Uh, once I figure out my numbers, I'm just basically using Optima and I'm, I'm putting in my two points and I'm creating a trend line. Now Optima will allow me to either extend that trend line into the future to the right hand side of the chart or it will also let me extend it backwards in time. So what I've done on this chart here is I've used the data point for January 2023. I've used the data point for July 2023. I've joined them. So now I've got my quantum line. And I just told Optima, extend that thing backwards in time. Let's go back into 2022 and see what the hell we've got. So, uh, Jupiter are the green lines. And you can see that since, um, you know, uh, let's say late April of this year, the S&P basically has been on a, a bit of a wild tear driven by some of these big tech names. Well, look at the, the angle that the S&P is climbing at. It parallels the Jupiter quantum line. Hmm, interesting. Um, let's take a look at um, oh, let's take a look at the pink line, Saturn. Now you'll notice that back in late 2022, the market hit a patch of resistance. Well, that was basically your Saturn quantum line. And the blue lines are Uranus. So your October lows were just a little bit beneath your Uranus quantum line. And the market just couldn't push any lower. It couldn't overcome that distortion of space and time. Prior to that, 
you had a low in June. And look where it stopped, right at your Uranus quantum line. And, you know, let's go back to uh, February, March of 2022. Again, you had a, a counter trend rally that started. Uh, where did it start? Yeah, right at a Saturn and Uranus uh, pair of quantum lines. Uh, look at your market peak in late 2021, just a little bit above your Saturn quantum line. And so the way I look at these things is I say, okay, these quantum lines are actually a roadmap. They kind of give me an indication where the markets are, are very likely to go. So where's the S&P going to go? I think we're going to have a bit of a pullback for various other uh, cosmic events here. But ultimately, I can see the S&P in the next, um, you know, six or eight months getting up to that Saturn quantum line, just above 4,800. And if you listen to some of the, the talking heads on um, places like Bloomberg, that's what they're now talking about. So these are a roadmap, and you can plot them on a price chart, and you can, you can very quickly convince yourself that these things are valid. Um, by just seeing how well they've aligned to different turning points. And then you start to project them forward and uh, you can you can sort of fee see what the future has entailed. Now, let's take a look at another one here. Uh, oh, here's gold. So um, what do we got here? Pluto is the brown line and uh, I've extended that thing back in time and March 2022, gold had a, a hell of a run. Um, and a lot of people were at the time saying, here we go. It's going to 5,000 bucks an ounce. No, no, it stopped at Pluto. It could not overcome that warpage distortion of space time. And the price of gold tumbled mightily and it fell. Now, the other thing I should tell you is uh, these various quantum lines, you can actually take the midway point between two of them, the half interval, if you will. So the yellow line is Neptune. The yellow dashed line at the bottom of the chart here is a half interval between the Neptune line at $1,800 an ounce and the next one lower. Look at what the price of gold did. Look where it stopped in September, October, November of 22 right at that half interval of Neptune. Now, um, most recently, we've got a half interval of the pink line, Saturn. And in July, just last month, that's where gold kind of found some support. You know, 1940 bucks an ounce. I don't know that gold is, uh, is going to get below that, but if it does break that support, I know that I've got Neptune down around $1,800 an ounce that's going to catch it. It's going to backstop it. So if you were thinking about buying gold, now you've got a roadmap in front of you. You know where the, where the underlying support is, and you know where the most recent support level is. You also know that if gold is going to really take off to the upside, it has got to get past that Pluto quantum line. And where did it fail most recently again? April, May of this year. So Pluto is a major roadblock standing in the way of gold. And if we can ever get through that Pluto quantum line, fasten your seatbelts and look out because gold is going to take off like a scared rabbit. But we have to break that Pluto line first. All right. All right. Um, here's a chart of wheat. And the green lines are Saturn, and you can see that a half interval of Saturn back in January of this year on a couple occasions was your overhead resistance. And you can see most recently we've got the purple line, which is Neptune. That provided a bit of a, a backstop in uh, June, July, just recently. And it's probably going to uh, get tested here in the next couple days again. So now you've got a bit of a roadmap. You know where that underlying support is. And if Neptune is broken, 
you know that you're going to get down to that Saturn quantum line down around 600, 610 a bushel. So, and you can project these, you know, going forward into the future. And now you've got basically a range where wheat is going to trade in and you can sort of factor that into your activities and your, uh, you know, if you're selling things like call options and put options, well, now you've got that roadmap in front of you. All right, here's oil. Um, I've got a pair of Jupiter uh, quantum lines and I've got Pluto. So basically what I'm seeing here is that certainly since, um, you know, December of, uh, of 22, basically we can say that uh, oil is being confined to the top and to the bottom within a Jupiter quantum line channel, if you will. And lately, oil has been on a little bit of a tear. Is it going to get up uh, and touch that Jupiter line? Um, maybe, um, but it's it's uh, it'll probably come very close here. But then it could easily pull back and head back down to the bottom of that channel. So now you've got a roadmap for where goal or for where oil is going to go. And if perchance, for geopolitical reasons. If the price gets above that, you know, 80, what is it, about 85, 86 dollars a barrel, uh, then you know that the next resistance point is a little over 90 at Pluto. And if it can get over that, then you're back up into the triple digits. So, you know, roadmap, that's what you want for, for trading oil related stocks. You need to know what to expect. And so, to sum it up, do you need to run out and buy Fabio Areste's book? No. You can if you want, but no, you don't need it. What you need is the equation. I've just given that to you. Your quantum line data point is N times 360 plus PSO. You need a piece of paper and a pencil. You need a calculator. You need your heliocentric ephemeris data. Get it from a book. Get it from the internet. I don't care where you get it, but get it. Calculate these things, and it will take you a little bit of time to play around to get into the to the proper um, conversion factor and the proper um, harmonic factor to, to bring your lines into the price range for your particular chart. But once you get there, you can very quickly lay these things out, and you can use it for individual stocks, indices of your choice, commodities of your choice, um, whatever you want to apply it to. Um, this stuff actually works. I've been I've been using it for several years now, and that's why I always include it in the uh, almanac. And speaking of which, I have now started um, the 2024 version. I'm about a third of the way through it, and um, yeah, things are are looking pretty good. And I do believe that we're gonna have. Um, a fairly resilient year ahead of us. Um, it's going to be volatile as hell, no question about it. But uh, I don't think the markets are going to, uh, you know, lose their mind and, and crash like many people are expecting. Um, visit me at investingsuccess.ca. You know, I've got the astrology letter. I've got the cycles report. I've got courses on udemy.com. Uh, oh, I'm on Substack as well, at Planetary Trader. So check me out and uh, use some of these quantum lines. It is powerful, powerful stuff. And uh, Albert Einstein, yeah, he was a smart old guy and he had it figured out. All right, y'all, have a wonderful day and we will talk real soon. Take care.